Hello, and welcome to the Fighting Moose Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Hendrickson. This is a podcast where I retell stories, some fictional and some historical, that can be enjoyed by people of all ages. Frog, hamster, frog, hamster. That seems to be the pattern of future pets whenever we go to the pet store. I haven't really looked yet, but I think I may have to look for some hamster stories. Either way, today John narrates the story, Grandfather Frog Gets Even, from the book Mother West Wind's Children, written by Thornton W. Burgess. Coming in the mail this week is the book The Adventures of Grandfather Frog, again written by Thornton W. Burgess. I actually did this as an audiobook back in July of 2018. It's actually kind of funny to listen to episodes when I first started this podcast. We queued this audiobook up the other day, and my introduction was crazy fast. I don't know how that even got released. Anyway, I think that I have gotten better at my reading pace, and I think John has improved as well. This episode was all his own reading. I gave him the microphone, the laptop, and the story to read, and I left him in the office to read. As I was editing, I had a smile on my face the whole time. There are a lot of emotions, which I think I kept a lot of. There are a lot of mispronunciations, which I edited out what I could. And there are a lot of chugga rummings. I have no idea what chugga rum means, but it's fun to say. It's time for me to stop talking and let John do his chugga rumming. Now, let's turn to today's story. I hope you enjoy. Let's begin. Liftoff! We have a liftoff! We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Grandfather Frog gets even. Old Grandfather Frog sat on his green lily pad in the smiling pool, dreaming of the days when the world was young and the frogs ruled the world. His hands were folded across his white and yellow waistcoat, round red smiling Mr. Sun, sent down his warmest rays on the back of Grandfather Frog's green coat. Very early that morning, old Mother Westwind hurried down from the Purple Hills on her way to help the white salad. Ships across the gray ocean had stopped long enough to be low three or four fat, foolish green flies over to the big lily pad, and they were now safely inside the white and yellow waistcoat. A thousand little tadpoles, the great-great-grandchildren of Grandfather Frog, were playing in the smiling pool, and every once in a while, wiggling up to the big silly lily pad to look at the awe at Grandfather Frog and wondering if they would ever be as handsome and big and wise as she. And still, old Grandfather Frog dreamed and dreamed of the days when all the frogs had tails and ruled the world. Presently, Billy Mink came hopping and skipping down the Laughing Brook. Sometimes he swam a little way and sometimes he ran a little way along the bank. And sometimes he jumped from a stone to stone. Billy Mink was feeling very good. Very good indeed. He had caught a fine fat trout for breakfast. 
he had hidden two more away for dinner. A snug little hole. No one who knew of it but himself. Now he had nothing to do but get into mischief. You can always depend on Billy Mink to get into mischief. He just can't help it. So Billy Mink came hopping and skipping down the laughing brook to the smiling pool. Then he stopped as still as the rock. He was standing on and peeping through the blurish. Billy Mink is very continuous. Very continuous indeed. He always looks well before he shows himself that nothing may surprise him. So Billy Mink looked all over the smiling pool and the grassy banks. He saw the sunbeams dancing on the water. He saw the tadpoles having such a good time in the smiling pool. He had the merry little breezes kissing the buttercups and dancing on the bank. And he saw old Grandfather Frog with his hands folded across his white and yellow waistcoat, sitting on the green lily pad, dreaming of the days when the world was young. Then, Billy Mink took the long breath and a very long breath and dived into a smiling pool. Now Billy Mink can swim very fast, very fast indeed. For a little way, he can swim even faster than Mr. Trout, and he can stay under water a long time. Straight across the smiling pool, with not even the tip of his nose out of the water, swam Billy Mink. The thousands of little tadpoles saw him coming and fleed in all directions to bury themselves in the mud. At the bottom of the smiling pool, for when he thinks no one is looking, Billy Mink sometimes gobbles up a fat tadpole for breakfast. Straight across the smiling pool swam Billy Mink toward the green lily pad where Grandfather Frog sat dreaming of the days when the world was young. When he was right under the big green lily pad, he suddenly kicked up a hard with his hind feet up with a green lily pad and of course up went grandfather frog up and over flat on his back with a green splash into the smiling pool now grandfather frog's mouth is very big indeed no one else has so big of a mouth unless it is it is his cousin, old Mr. Toad. And when Grandfather Frog went over flat on his back, splashing the smiling pool, his mouth was wide open. You see, he was so surprised he forgot too close to it. So, of course, Grandfather swelled a great deal of water and he choked and splittered and swam around the, in the foolish little circles trying to find himself. Finally, he climbed out on his big green lily pad. Chug a rum? said Grandfather Frog, and looking his way and looking that way. Then he gave a funny hop and turned about on the opposite direction and looked this way and looked that way. But all he saw was the smiling pool dimpling and 
smiling Mr. Redwing, bringing a fat worm to her hungry little babies. In their snug nest in the bushels, in the merry little breezes hurrying over to see what trouble this might be. Chug a rum, said Grandfather Frog. It is very strange. I must have fallen asleep and had a bad dream. When he had no more himself comfortable in the lily pad, folded his hands across his white waistcoat and seemed to be dreaming again. Only his big goggly eyes were not dreaming. No, indeed, they were not. Were very much awake, and you saw all that was going on the smiling pool. Great Grandfather Frog was just pretending. You may fool him once, but Grandfather Frog has lived so long that he has become very wise and. But Billy Mink is very smart, too. It takes someone a great deal smarter than Billy Mink to fool Grandfather Frog twice in the same way. Billy Mink, hiding behind the big rock, had laughed and laughed till he had to hold his sides when Grandfather Frog had choked and splittered and hopped about on the big lily pad, trying to find out what it all meant. He thought it such a big joke that he couldn't keep it to himself. So when he saw little Joe Otter coming to try his slippery slide, he swam across to tell him all about it. Little Joe Otter laughed and laughed until he had to hold his sides. When They both swam back to hide behind the big rock to watch until Grandfather Frog should forget all about it and they could play the trick over again. Now, out of the corner of one of his big goggly eyes, Grandfather Frog had seen Billy Mink and Little Joe Otter when their heads close together, laughing and holding their sides, and he saw them swim over to behind the big rock. Plenty soon, of merry little breezes danced over to see if Grandfather Frog had really gone to sleep. Grandfather Frog didn't move. Not the ten- teensiest, weensiest bit, but Grandfather Frog had really gone to sleep. Grandfather Frog didn't move, not the teensiest, weensiest bit, but he whispered something to the Merry Little Breezes, and the Merry Little Breeze flew away, shaking with laughter to where the Merry Little Breezes were playing with the buttercups and dancing. Then all the merry little breezes clapped their hands and laughed too. They left the buttercups and danced and began to play a tag across the smiling pool. Now right on the edge of the big rock lay a big stick Pretty soon, the Merry Little Breezes danced over to the big rock, and then suddenly, all together, they gave a big stick plush. Off they went. Then, splash! And squealing as they're behind the big rock. A few moments, little Joe Otter crept out beside his slippery side and slipped away, holding onto his head and sneaking through the bushes so as no one to be seen, called Billy Mink back 
towards his home and the laughing brook. Billy Mink wasn't laughing now. Oh no! He was limping and he was holding on to his head. Little Joe Otter and Billy Mink had been sitting underneath a big stick. Chug a rum, said Grandfather Frog, and held on his sides on the upper mouth. Very wide in a noisy laugh, for Grandfather Frog had never makes a sound when he laughs. Chug a rum, said Grandfather Frog once more. Then he folded his hand across his white and yellow waistcoat and began to dream of the days when the frogs had long tails and ruled the world. Dun, 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 dun. Griffin, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Fighting Moose Podcast. Please join us next time as we read another exciting story. Today's music was provided by the artist Analog by Nature, and the audio clips were provided from NASA. For more information to download and or listen to audio or materials from all our recordings, or to contact us, please visit www.thefightingmoose.com, or you can follow the links in the show notes. And as always, try and do a random act of kindness every day. Mission complete, Houston. After uh, serving the world for over 30 years, the space shuttle turned its place in history and it's come to a final stop.